Welcome back to Guess That Price. In this series, I ask other Yugi tubers and YouTubers the price of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. No, 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 Ruxin. Hold on a second. Wait, who is that? What if instead Wait. of you asking the price, what if we flip it a bit and test your knowledge with card prices for once? I think your fans would like to see how well you can play at your own game. Ruxin34 is a Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber that specializes in opening and collecting Yu-Gi-Oh! product and cards. He is known for opening rare Yu-Gi-Oh! products as well as opening packs for the rarest new cards for hours at a time. Today we find out if he knows his Yu-Gi-Oh! prices. Yeah, that was weird making a voiceover for myself, but yeah, I just did it. Okay, get over it. All right then, I take your challenge. Today I will be attempting to guess prices of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, uh, but I don't know what they are. So this is gonna be probably pretty difficult. I think we'll be going by the same rules that you usually have for the series. Do you wanna go over those for those who may not be informed? So I'm gonna have 10 questions in this quiz. There's gonna be three in tier one, tier two, and tier three. There are different ranges for those tiers. They'll pop up on the screen. I will also have three different lifelines in this game, so hopefully those will help me not get completely annihilated by some of these random niche cards that I'm sure Alex is about to give to us. So let's just get into it. I'm sure you're gonna do fine, Ruxin. I'm sure you're gonna do fine. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take mercy on you. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna throw you a bone. Okay, I'm gonna start okay. you with an easy one. Card number one is gonna okay. be Obelisk the Tormentor jump promo. Obelisk the Tormentor. So, okay, so, so how okay. well do you know your jump promos, buddy? Quick interjection. If you guys went into the giveaway, I'm giving away this Battles of Legend Monsters Revenge booster box. Just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. Let me know down below. Do you want to see more of me guessing Yu-Gi-Oh prices? Let me know down below. Well, uh, yeah, if this is an easy one, it's going to be a, a long day probably because <laughs> This is the one that looks just like the GBI secret, <laughs> but it's not the GBI secret. So I at least know it's less than that usually. But by how much? <laughs> yeah, there's been so many obelisk reprints recently with, you know, they're making 25th anniversary versions. They have a new legendary collection reprint of the ultra rares. Like this thing could have gone down because of that, but most people don't even know about this card. So probably not. I think... If, I, if I'm going to go tiers, I think this thing is probably, it's definitely not a tier three card. Um, it could be like a low tier two, but I would probably say tier one in my opinion. Okay. Uh, okay. Because we're doing all near mint prices here as usual. We don't usually delve into mod play and stuff. It can get crazy like that. If it's a near mint JMP, just my gut is telling me like 80 bucks, but that's just like completely random. I haven't seen the price of this card in a long time. So my gut is telling me like 80 bucks. I don't want to use any sort of like lifelines yet because you know those those will come up later i do get to drop one so if this one's like miserably bad you know maybe <laughs> i'll drop this one um i don't have a lot to like really like think about here i i'm just gonna go with my gut i'm gonna go do i want to edge it a little bit toward a hundred you know always go with your gut that's what i tell everyone who's on this show so 80 bucks that's what i'm gonna say final answer i'm gonna go off on a boomer tangent for a second i actually remember getting one of these cards like in the jump promo like that's that's how long i've been around but 80 bucks yeah. is your final answer well ruxin for your first card in your own series this card the jump promo obelisk the tormentor goes for $55. Okay, okay, yeah, I was in the right area. I was a little bit high, I overestimated. it. Maybe some of those reprints did affect it, I'll have to look, but okay, that's that's pretty reasonable, 55 bucks. Makes sense. Only 25 off. I can handle that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, for what it's worth, looking at the price chart, you actually, if we would have played this a month ago or two months ago, it would have been almost right on the money for you. So, so, I, so I was right. Could have been the reprints. reprints. Could have been the reprints. I should have listened to myself. And see, okay. I told you that was an easy one, but from here on out, you're not getting any easy ones. <laughs> that's the easy one. Great. Let's go to card number two. For card number two, we are going to do first edition secret rare Archlord Christia from Stardust Overdrive. Oh, I'm so mad. Someone just messaged me and they told me about how they, they graded one that I had looked at like two years ago and they just graded it and got a 10. I should have checked the price right then, but I did it. <laughs> so I remember this card in PSA 10 being like really expensive. Like it was like $3,000, 2,800, something like that. But the first ed, this is definitely tier three. I can say this for sure. Uh, this is really hard to find because Stardust Overdrive doesn't come in first ed unless you get uh, a European box, which are pretty really hard to find actually. 
or if you get them in like the pre-release packs or the tins, which are like, those are also impossible to find. So yep. first ed stuff from this set is really rare. And then Edison has gone crazy recently. So this is a great card in the fairy deck. So this thing, I have an idea that of my, my first guess is 750. Yeah, I remember it being really expensive because I sold an unlimited for like 150 or something or 135 or something like that. It was really expensive for an unlimited secret. Uh, for first ed, I think I remember it being like, I saw the price and I was like, is it really that much now? I think it was 750, but I did notice in my $1,000 video the other day, spinning on TCG player, the Edison cards have shot up. Like, uh, I don't know if you saw, but uh, Battle Fader Unlimited is $130 yep. right now. Yep. So, I mean, you're the one always saying go with your gut. So, I mean, if you feel like that's where you're you're feeling, you know, that's fine. 750 feels great. I don't expect like a card like this to have had a lot of movement since I last saw it. It could have, like maybe somebody bought the one I saw and then they posted another one for like, you know, a thousand or something. But I'm just going to throw it out there. It could have gone up and I'm going to go with my original gut of $750. $750. Is that your final answer for the Stardust yeah, yep, Overdrive? Not changing Christian? anything now. Well, you'll be happy to know that this card goes for $694. So okay, actually so pretty close considering it was a tier three and there was a wide variance it could have been. There was there must have been some listings. Some people shot, saw that 750 and were like, yeah, we gotta capitalize on this. This card's <laughs> insane. All right, I feel good about that. I'm happy. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you feel good about that one because like I said, again, uh, <laughs> that was another easy one. I think from here on okay. out, you're probably, you're probably screwed looking at the rest of the cards I have for you. So <laughs> Let's, okay. let's see how well your knowledge is when we have card number three. It is the World Championship 2011 card pack Monster Eye. Okay, World Championship 2011. This is the all super rare set. I think it was supers. They're all hollows. World Championship 2010 was all rares, I believe. So this is the more valuable of the two. It's a very random card. Most of these cards were. I think Alligator Sword was the best one in the set. Uh, I don't, it's kind of weird when it's not that big one. I don't know what these random ones like Monster Eye go for. I know they're definitely money. But how much money? I'm leaning towards tier two on this. Okay. The question is, is it like 110 or is it like 220, 200? The question is, did it like jump into tier three? I don't think it did. That would be a little aggressive on this one. I think it's probably tier two somewhere. My gut is telling me around 200 if I had to guess. Okay. But I don't think I've ever actually seen the price of this card specifically. That was the idea. I've just seen other cards from this set that are kind of expensive, but 200 seems a little high for a card like this, but at the same time, it's like there's probably one listing or something like that. Uh, so it really could be anything at that point. You do have lifelines, don't forget. If you're not feeling confident about this one, you do have the option to throw it yeah, away. Yeah, but I feel okay. If I have to drop this one, you know, it's fine. No big deal. Um, I don't want to waste the tier one. I don't think you're going back to back tier threes, but honestly, that would be probably be something you would do. What but do if it mean? is back to back. Why? Okay, how can you even assume or even say that I would do something so evil in your <laughs> own series? I would never do such a thing. That's a good point. But also, if it is a tier three, I've knocked out two of the three tier threes and maybe a fourth one already. And then I can just drop this one and then I can figure the other one out later. So that wouldn't be the worst thing ever to miss this one. You know, I'm just going to stick with it. I think I'm going to go with 200 flat on this card because I feel like that would be a price that if you're just listing a card with no listings, you would just put it at like 200. You wouldn't say like 174 or something. You'd pick like a flat number and I'm gonna go, I think 200 could be a little high. There's also a world where it's the only listing at like, at like $500, but I'm gonna go 200. 200's your final answer? You seem a little happy. I don't know if I wanna answer on that. Um, yes, it is, it is. Okay, well, the World Championship 2011 Monster Eye goes for Two hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, so I said two twenty. You said two twenty. I was making faces oh. into the camera when you said it because I was like, "Wow, if he gets this one right on the money, I will be shocked." Uh, no. This also is like there are other listings, but this is actually the lowest listing for this card uh, at near right. mint. So uh, right. I would say this is probably the most accurate baseline listing for this card. But yeah, I mean everything oh. you said, I was like, "Wow, I was impressed." This is a very obscure card, so very impressive. All right, glad that we're only twenty off on that tier threes were only off by a small margin. So I'm okay with that. We're doing good so far. All right. Well, tier, that's a tier two. Not that tier is a tier three, two. Yeah. So you have one of each good. so far. And so let's go yep. ahead and get into card number four. We're going to, we're going to stay, you know, in the, in the realm of cards that are relatively obscure. 
We're gonna go with a Gladiator's Assault Secret Rare Gilgarth. Oh, this is a, you You really are pulling out all the, the <laughs> crazy ones. This is a card that is actually like ridiculously hard to find, which makes no sense because it's a four star vanilla. I am pretty sure this is a tier three card. I know it's not a tier one, that's for sure. If it's a tier two, like I'd be, I'd be kind of surprised. I think this is a tier three, but I could just be thinking of like PSA prices being really high on this. But I remember that like, this is a card that I've never seen like pulled before out of glass and I've never pulled it myself. This guy is probably a good one to use something on because I, I know he's expensive, but I don't know how expensive. It would probably be good to do a higher or lower just to like minimize the damage. But then I need to decide like, you know, if I say like 300 and it's like 700, but I don't think it's 700 because there's there's no real use for this card. So even though it is rare, there's no like Edison format propping it up like the Arts Lord Christia. So if this thing's up at 700 with that, that's just ridiculous. Hey man, this is a rescue rabbit target. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, whenever that comes back and they start, uh playing Gilgarth and the Rescue Rabbit, then that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. Um, I'm just going to go with my gut, which is probably, I feel like my gut is probably not right on this one. The other ones I at least had like more of a basis around what I was guessing. This one is a little bit more random. I'm going to go with 300 and lock that in. Okay, final answer. Gilgarth, secret rare, $300. Final answer? I'm not going to change. I'm going to stay with 300. I think it's a little low, but I'm going to go 300. Okay, 300. Final answer locked in. Mr. Ruxin34. I think this is the first blunder you've had of your yeah. quiz. First edition Gladiator's Assault Gilgarth near mint is 785 US dollars. It is more than the Christia. That is crazy. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking that, and then I was like, that cannot be right. There's no way it's $700. Hmm, I wonder oh. if I purposely put the Christia before this on purpose. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. 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 I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'll have to consider Could be that a coincidence. For later. Could be a coincidence. Fortunately, this one will be dropped, and I am through two tier threes now. I don't have to worry about this. That's true. But now That's I can't true. mess up anymore. You can't mess up. Any yeah, your your margin for error is uh, going down dramatically. And was, was there like very few listings on this card? No, there's actually multiple. So there's that one. And then after after that, the next one's actually $800. So Golly. it goes even Yeah, further. this card is stupidly rare yeah. like, for no reason. It's incredibly rare. Um, But the next card is also incredibly rare because for card number five, we have a false bound kingdom copy of kinetic soldier the false bound wait is this the is this like different country version <laughs> oh my gosh this you, is wrong, you, man. you said english you didn't say it <laughs> doesn't have so to wrong. be in a different country <laughs> this is so wrong okay <laughs> all right so now this is where we have to understand. So the False Bound Kingdom, this is also where you get the Sinister Serpent. Correct. False Bound Kingdom. Which Correct, is but that would be too like easy because you know that card. Most yeah, people probably well, don't even know that Kinetic Soldier has a False Bound Kingdom printed. Right, so even if I did know that, I mean, I saw a D, uh, one of those servants sold for like 3,300, but like, I think the listings are a 5K. So it's like the range here is like absurd. There's just no way to like know what this is gonna be. And this one is like, this one's probably even more rare just cause you don't know about it. Uh, but what they did was in different countries, they had like the, the games, but the games had different promos based on where you got them. So like we got DDS and had the Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Exodia, but in the Spanish copies, they actually got those in a different game. I think it was in, uh, it might've been in, I don't remember which one it was, but they, their DDS was not those cards. They got the yeah. Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, and Exodia in a different version or a di completely different game. It and was it makes like, you uh, question why? Like that doesn't even make sense. Like, I guess like if you want to- It's wanted, so confusing. It, yeah, it, it's like, I don't know. I guess it's like cool that there's region exclusive cards, but like from a distribution perspective, that just seems like a nightmare having to have different sets of cards for your game. I don't know. That that's just I'm wondering if that was because like maybe they released the games later or something, and then like that was the cards they kind of had at the moment. But then like you have to re well, you still have to reprint different ones because they have different set names. So I don't yep. know what that was about. Not to mention Kinetic Soldier has also been renamed to Cypher Soldier on top yeah. of it. So <laughs> let's let's continue with the weird history that this card has. But in any case, yeah. it seems like you're you're stalling because you don't know what the price of this card is. I have no idea what the price <laughs> of this thing is. This thing is, uh, this thing should be banned for multiple reasons. Wrong set, wrong name. Uh, wrong country. <laughs> yeah, wrong country. Like, uh, this guy, uh, yeah. And then if you, you equip him with like spike shield with chain, you just lose automatically in dual links. All those things. Um, 
I guess it could be another tier three, but surely not. You have I'm lifelines. That... Would I put two, three tier threes in the first five of the quiz? I mean, probably. It's... And then you'd have a fourth one in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, the thing is with the serpent, though, it had go format boosting it for so many years. This thing has nothing boosting it. No one's playing Kinetic Soldier. Uh, I don't know, uh, buddy. Warriors are like one of the best decks in GOAT format. And if you read, this card gains 2,000 attack and defense. <laughs> no, read the effect of what this card does, buddy. When it battles a warrior, it becomes 3850. This thing's insane. Okay, that's true. But I've still never seen it played, okay? <laughs> okay. Even, even in GOAT, I haven't seen it. It's actually seeing play in uh, Edison, as a matter of fact, because the hero decks. <laughs> oh, that, I need, that, that's helpful. That thing's probably like $5,000 now. Um, <laughs> Oh, there, this is, there's, I have nothing to say. There's no, there's no, no way to decipher what this is. You uh, have no way to decipher soldier what this is. You have uh, lifelines. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. I could use a lifeline, but I was thinking last time I could use a lifeline. I don't think it would have helped me because I knew it was over tier three. So even higher, lower would it. Same thing with this. No matter what you tell me, it's not going to help. Other than like, if you told me it was a tier one card, then maybe I could see this being a tier one card actually <laughs> and this is like one to throw me off because nobody knows what it is so how does the price go up if nobody knows about it i think i'm on to you i think i'm on to you i think i gotta go gutsy look i gotta pick one way or another i okay. either gotta pick like eight hundred dollars or i gotta pick <laughs> eight, a tier one eight I'm, yeah or i'm i'm gonna go i'm gonna go a little gutsy here okay all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go tier one because what do we have tier one so far we've had one tier one one tier two two tier threes correct this correct. thing is is tier one that's okay. my guess okay it is not going to be like five bucks because there won't be enough listings for it to be that cheap it'll be like somebody found one of these and they were like i can't find a listing for it maybe i'll just put it up for like 50 bucks is what they'll do okay. maybe even like 20 it's possible to do that but i'm gonna go right in the middle of tier one 50 dollars i expect that this thing is gonna be cheap here we go what is it okay so 50 dollars for the false bound kingdom copy of kinetic soldier and i'll die on that hill it's kinetic soldier not cypher soldiers that's your final right. answer uh yeah it is so this card near mint Two hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> that comment. <laughs> Who's in the bill? It's just an expensive card. It wasn't overly expensive for cheap. Yeah. To be fair, there aren't many listings for this. I actually think this yeah. might be the only near mint copy. There's a couple light plays, a couple med plays, but even the light yeah. plays are sort of like 160, 180 anyway. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like this, again, being like a false bound kingdom card, especially because it's alongside something like Sinister Serpent. I think that's, yeah. it's, you were on the right track with that, but it's also not as expensive as a, as a Sinister Serpent for obvious reasons. So I still think that this is the dumbest reason for cards <laughs> to be expensive. <laughs> TFK DDS or uh, Serpent. I don't care about that card at all. Why are people paying five thousand dollars because it's from a different country? Lame, lame. I Rarity. Say. People want to flex. Oxen. People it's not want even rare. To flex. It's from a different country. <laughs> Come on! So speaking of flexing, and uh, the, the best part about that is, yeah, you may have whiffed on that Kinetic Soldier, but you do know that there's another tier two that's out moving forward. Mm -hmm. But speaking true. of rare cards, let's move on to the Battle Pack Tournament Prize Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon that is oh, Starfoil. God. Thankfully, I found out about these recently. Did I didn't you? even know about these cards. Okay. So I had a Spirit Reaper from this Battle Pack Tournament thing, and I was like, why is this card 50 bucks? It turns out it's like a tournament prize kind of thing. I yep. would have thought it was like a $1 card because everything in like the battle pack foiling, I'm like, just assume it's cheap. That one was not, it's about $50. Chimeratic Fortress, also playable in Edison. So Spirit Reaper playable in Goat. Very playable, playable in Edison. Edison. Reaper is also playable in Edison to be fair. Yeah, so this is definitely not going to be like super cheap, but I think that now that we're down to one tier one, this is going to be the other tier one. So we're going to be like two, two, two so far, I think. That's just normally how it usually works out. You could have switched it up, but you don't really want to save a bunch of tier ones for the end because it's kind of boring unless they're super sneaky, which this one's a little sneaky, but I knew fortunately that this is it's somewhat it's not an expensive card, but it's not cheap. It's not super cheap. The only price I know was the Spirit Reaper about 48 bucks or something like that. We'll start there. Do you think it's more or less than Spirit Reaper? I think that's a good place to start. That's where I'm kind of going. I think it's very similar because they're both still usable. Mm -hmm. They're both equally as rare, I assume, because the same rarity. So I would peg it around the same amount, and I really don't have any reason to go other than like Cyber Dragon probably being more popular. So maybe add on a little bit more than the Spirit Reaper versus because there's no Spirit Reaper archetype 
to have fans of. I would probably bump it a little bit higher just because you can use it in current format with your, your Cyber Dragon deck. You can use it in Edison format. So instead of 50, I'll say like 60, 60. I'll just say 60. $60. That, the final answer for the Battle Pack Starfoil Tournament Prize Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. That's a, that's a mouthful, but yes. Okay. Well, this may be your best hit yet. This is a $75 card. Oh. So pretty close, pretty close. I almost said 65 and I was like, ah. Uh, and well, first I was thinking 75, just add 50%, but that's still pretty good. I, I knew that this couldn't be that crazy because this is really niche. Like if I don't know about it, it's probably pretty niche. Like the Kinetic Soldier. <laughs> yeah, well, I did know about it. I just didn't know the price. I knew what the card was. Sure. Yeah, okay, I feel good about that. That seems reasonable. You knowing the spirit reaper definitely helped you out that's for sure if i didn't know the spirit reaper i honestly probably would have guessed like one dollar <laughs> But like <laughs> you saying tournament prize might have thrown me off and I might have gone like 300, but I would have been between there. I wouldn't have been this close for sure. Well, let's see how our seventh card fares. Uh, so we've got two of everything so far knocked out because we can't give you any freebies. We have to make it difficult. There have been no freebies. For card number seven, we have the Duelist League promo Breath of Light. Ah, the Breath of Light, Duelist League promo. Someone was just talking about this card the other day. I believe it was U Uber was talking about this. I think he was gonna buy a ton of these and I feel like he was buying them at $100 each, which I don't know much about this card. I just know it's a very random card that's expensive, but not like, this isn't like a $500 card, I think, but he, maybe he was getting a good deal at 100. I'm assuming if he was gonna buy them at 100, they're probably a little more. My gut was telling me he was dealing with $100. So I feel like it's a $150 card which would be our third tier two. Tier two is the most boring one anyway. <laughs> so you can kind of sneak some ones that seem like they'd be cheap or expensive and kind of, you know, backdoor them into tier two. Like 95% sure this is between 101 and $250. The question is where? I'm between 150 and 200. I want to say 150, but it could be 200. Could split the difference, go 175, but then, you know, if you're if you're right about one of them, you, you feel bad because you could have just guessed it. You still haven't used any lifelines, and this is card number seven, so, I mean, I know you're saving them for the end here. I forgot I could have swapped one. You know what? I, sh I should have swapped the Kinetic Soldier because I knew I wasn't going to get that one. Um, <laughs> you said it wouldn't have been as fun, though, which I agree with. That's true. It wouldn't have been as fun. Same with this one. My gut's saying 150, but the split safer decision is 175. It's not like I'm really killing it right now anyway, so I might as well just go for what I think. Let's go for 150. That's what I'm gonna go for. 150, Breath of Light Duelist League promo for $150. Is that your final answer? Yes. You're actually pretty close. It was $130. Oh, okay. Very okay. close, very close. So like, honestly, aside from the Kinetic Soldier, you haven't been that far off with... So actually, no, the yeah. Gilgarth you got wrecked on too. That's true. <laughs> yeah, the Gilgarth was the really bad one. The Kinetic Soldier, I kind of knew I was in trouble, but this one, yeah, th that this makes sense. I'm glad I stuck with my 150 so I didn't get farther away from it. So that's yeah. nice. This next one will be uh, a bit interesting, I feel like. Let's go ahead oh and move ourselves towards card number eight. Elemental Hero Flame Wingman from the Elemental Hero Collection 1. Ooh, yeah, this is a cool version of the card. I bought a lot of these different uh, Elemental Hero Collection secret rares for like in like mod play and light play. I know in those conditions, they're like anywhere from like 40 to like 80 usually. But when you go to near mint on TCG player, there can sometimes be a massive gap because like there's a lot of light plays and there's like no near mint. So like it go up like two or three times what the light plays worth. But I know that this one is not like a crazy expensive card, unless for some reason all the near mints are sold out, which I don't think, it's not that rare of a card. It's a little bit niche. How many have we done now? We've done uh, this is card three tier twos. Eight. This is three tier twos and two of the other two? Correct. Ooh, that makes me want to lean tier one because I feel like you wouldn't have four tier twos and do it before the end because it makes it more interesting at the end if you have the fourth one. So I think that this is probably tier one. I would be surprised if this got up to 251 plus and it's going to be a little bit more towards like 100 versus towards zero. So I'm going to go with a solid 70. Why do I feel like that's high now? What saying 75 feels high now for some <laughs> reason. It's got it's more than 50. I think it's got to be more than 50 near mint. I, OK, let's go 70. 70. I'll go to 70 on this. All right, $70 for the Elemental Hero Collection Flame Wingman. Is that your final answer? Yes. $70. You are almost right on the money. $68 oh, for this one. I almost got 69 wow. for the memes. I would have been $1 <laughs> off. 
Oh, okay, okay. That was I impressive. Feel good about that one. That was impressive. I was trying to trip you up with this because some of the cards from this collection are like exorbitantly expensive, but Flame Wingman is not one of them. I, I kind of remember that as I was saying it. I was like, wait, I feel like this one's cheaper than like the Bubble Man for some reason. So you did well for card number eight, but that actually brings us to the end of the video. And I have two final cards that I have to share with you here. So we have an ultimate rare first edition elemental hero tempest from elemental energy oh boy and the super rare sengenjin from premium pack two. Oh, okay sengenjin um elemental hero tempest i have a very good relationship with i once graded a 10 and then i sold it so that i could it helped me buy, I didn't pay for it, but it helped me buy my first LOB box. That was the big video that kind of blew up my channel. So I, I have fond memories of the Tempest. It's a very expensive card. Back then I sold it for, I think it was like 17 or 1800, might've been 16, I don't remember, for a 10. But now that the raw card is like, up there in that in that ballpark it's like a thousand plus i think so that that's a big one that's definitely tier three we can guarantee that so that means that this will not be a tier three card right wait no wait how many tier threes have we had two if you're considering the tempest as a tier three we have had three of each yeah so, so we've had two before this correct two before this that doesn't help me at all because then the <laughs> singagen can be anything <laughs> this is premium pack right uh-huh why do I feel like there's another version of this card? Isn't there a Singenjin? I don't know. Why is there another version of this card, Ruxin? I think there's a Toys R Us version or something. Is that this? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Normally, I, I cap it at 1,000, but I don't know if... I didn't tell you that, so you might have gone over 1,000, which makes me worried about the Tempest. It's possible. Singenjin, I really want to say Singenjin super rare is like $2 or something, but I haven't looked that price up in like probably since 2019, so you never really know what's happened with that card since. My gut is saying Tempest 1400 or so, but it could be like 12. And then the Singenjin, I don't even understand how this card would be expensive if there's a secret <laughs> version of it. And there's also like a, a more rare version, the Toys R Us version. This one, we're gonna be off by like, a, like a, at least a couple hundred on this probably. You have lifelines, I'm just saying. All right, sure. We, we won't go all the way. There's no reason not to. So, we'll, okay, Singenjin, tier me, tell me it's tier one. For Singenjin? Yeah, just tell me the tier. Tier one. Okay, I thought so. Cheap card. That's probably like <laughs> two bucks. Okay, it's probably risky, uh, but I could make it fun and just put in a guess for tempest then we swap and then we can see how close i was on both let's do that let's i'm gonna i'm gonna guess tentatively 1400 this doesn't count this is just for fun okay and then i'm gonna swap the tempest for another uh tier three card assuming that uh this is tier three which it is the card that you are swapping for is retro pack two valkyrian the magna warrior okay okay all right okay this isn't too bad um this card is one of the cheaper secrets from Retro Pack 2, but it's still going to be Tier 3, obviously, because the Tempest was. So that means we're over 250. I would say this is between 250 and three, 251, technically, and then 350. Could maybe get to 400, so I should probably do higher or lower at, like, 325. And then I can kind of gauge from there. And if I hit it right on the, the head, which has never happened, then I guess you can just say neither and then I'll just know what it is. I'm gonna do 325 higher or lower on the Valkyrian. 325 higher or lower on Valkyrian the Magna Warrior, Retro Pack 2, it is higher. I think it's probably 350, something like that, but it might go up to 400. There is a world where it's 500, but I don't think that this card's that much. The, the only reason it would be up there would be there's just no near mint listings, which is definitely possible. So I'm going to go like 375 to be safe because like, no, well, I, I really think it's, I said 325. Yeah, so that, that puts me between 350 and 400. Let's do that, 375. And then on Singenjin, I will do, I've been saying two the whole time for the meme, so two bucks. <laughs> okay, so for the premium pack to Sengenjin, uh, it is three dollars so yeah, I, let's go! <laughs> I was I trying it. to trip right. you up with that one but uh you did not fall right. for it so congratulations i was hoping you might use lifelines and then like maybe you wouldn't know so I'm like okay we yeah. try it however valkyrian oh. the magna warrior you are way off this card is twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> Somebody bought the cards out. I think a ten is worth twelve hundred. This is TCG player screwing me right now. There this are, is not there are multiple much. listings at twelve hundred, and then there's yeah. one that's actually a graded one at thirteen, and then someone else has another one for I, fifteen. I think this PSA ten is worth less than this. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> 
<laughs> just throwing that out there. So the elemental hero Tempest, because I know you were also curious about this, uh, was okay. you were you were cl definitely a lot closer with the Tempest. So when you switched to okay. the Valkyrian and you were saying it was one of the cheaper retro pack secrets, that's why I started laughing. I was hoping that this yeah. would trip you up. Uh, Tempest, you were pretty close. It is a thousand and fifty dollars. So you're only okay, a couple yeah. hundred off. That makes sense. That makes sense. The, the Valkyrian's price has definitely changed a lot <laughs> since I last saw it. I'm assuming that there was probably like a couple listings and they got bought. Could be. And now they're 12. Now the lowest is 1200. So you know what? That's just how it goes when you use TCG player. Because a lot is. of things can happen. That is. But uh, okay. All right. That's how it usually ends in these episodes. The last two can be rough. All right, Simo. Thank you for that very easy quiz. Uh, very <laughs> well-known cards. I'm sure everybody watched this, knew all those cards you asked. Very not obscure at all. So I nope. appreciate that. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. If you want a round two, I'll go and dive into the depths of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's history and find even more obscure stuff to uh, to see test, test your pricing knowledge on again. I might need a break after this, after what you just did to me, but that, that was a good time. So uh, everybody go check out Simo, the goat, if you haven't heard about him somehow. Wait, didn't we used to do something together? I can't remember what it I was. I don't think so. Something with prices of cards too. Yeah. No, I, no, no. We must have had a dream about that. Cause like, yeah, I feel like that, that sounds familiar, happen. but I don't know. Yeah, weird. Yeah, nah, eh, yeah, I don't know. Let us know in the comments. Maybe we're onto something. <laughs> Could have been. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. The final results were, he asked me 10 questions with a total of $3,450 in value. That might, that's gotta be like the highest yet. That's extremely high. When you take away the one that I had to drop, which was of course the Valkyrian, I was off by like $800. Uh, I was $794 off. Then I got nine out of 10 tiers correct. So I get to subtract $90 out of that, leaving us with $704 off. If you divide that into the 3,450, I was 20.4% off, which honestly, with how that Valkyrian ended, I thought it was going to be a lot worse but here's a little disclaimer for myself just going to throw this out there i found a valkyrian psa 9 sold for 364 dollars right here just saying uh so my 375 dollar guess would have been 11 dollars off if we had used that price which that's not how this works i know that i know i know i'm just complaining i'm just vending for you guys let's say in theory that had been the real price on tcg player i would have only been 6.67 percent off so would have been a lot better just saying i'm just throwing that out there if the valkyrian tcg sellers weren't going crazy and not looking up ebay prices who knows might have happened so if you guys did enjoy this and you want to see maybe simo do this again or maybe even someone else come on and bring their own you know 10 questions and just see how i do it's pretty fun because he came up with some really unique cards that were fun to talk about so if you want to see this again make sure to like the video subscribe let me know down below thank you guys again